Today I rise in opposition to House Bill 4647, the bill to amend the Michigan Public Schools Employees Retirement System, or, EP, or MIPSERS, as we call it colloquially. And today, like the gentleman from Clarkston, I'm not only speaking as a member of the legislature, I'm speaking as a teacher, but specifically as a higher education teacher and as a parent of children who attend public school in my district. One of the few parents in this body, I might add, that has children currently in Michigan's traditional public schools. Now, a lot of the rhetoric around MIPSERS has been solely about teachers. Now, our teachers are professionals, and their profession needs to be valued both while they are charged with educating and nurturing our children, but also so that they can adequately save for retirement. But our public schools are more than the teachers. Keep in mind, this is about the Michigan Public School Employees Retirement System. And that does not only affect K through 12 teachers, it affects the employees of community colleges, intermediate school districts, regular school districts, certain district libraries, and participating public school academies. It affects a vast number of people that are integral parts of the school day, school week, and school year of our children, not only while they are with them, but in the hours they, that they are not face to face with them. Let me share a real world daily example of how far and broadly the reach of the MIPSER system is, even when we're only talking about public elementary schools. Here's who my kids see in their typical school day. It starts with the bus drivers. My school district, thankfully, has been able to keep its transportation, transportation system in place and not have to contract it out to a private company. They are greeted by their principal when they get off the bus. They see the office staff, cafeteria workers, maintenance and custodial staff, librarians throughout the day, as well as their own classroom teachers and the ones who teach their specials. These are people who are household names, who provide more than just reading, writing, and arithmetic. And let me tell you who these people are. They're not only the folks who simply work in our schools. As Bob McGrath from Sesame Street would sing, these are the people in our neighborhoods. Some of them are also parents or grandparents of kids in our schools. They are a part of our communities. To my second point, as an adjunct at the Wayne County Community College District, in addition to the traditional community college population, I have taught dual enrollment students. And for those who don't know, those students are public high school students who take college level courses at our community colleges in addition to their regular high school curriculum. These kids, and they are kids, are entrusted to me by their parents and the school district to help further their education. Now regarding the fiscal issues of this bill. According to our nonpartisan House fiscal analysis, the bill would increase costs relating to providing retirement benefits by $23 million in fiscal year 2017-18, according to the estimates providing by the Office of Retirement Services. And just so that we're aware of the timing, that means the school year that begins this coming fall. For most public school systems, tomorrow is the last day of school. So that means next school year. These costs would grow annually as the number of employees in the new hybrid and DC plans grow, and that risk to the state and local unit of, unit of governments is unknown right now. This bill does not address the $29 billion of unfunded liability associated with the current closed pension system that has been closed to new enrollees since 2010, and which still has a higher assumed rate of return than what's even being currently offered. One of the other issues with this bill is that it makes the retirement age a moving target for most new hires. It also would eliminate the purchase of service credits other than credit for active duty in the armed forces in the basic and member investment plans until the purchase is initiated, unless the purchase is initiated by September 29th of this year. Employees in the hybrid plan hired since July of 2010 are not eligible to purchase service credit. In other words, it penalizes teachers who are primarily women for taking leave to start families or any of the other reasons for which they might elect to purchase service credits. We are hurting the very people in our neighborhoods. Additionally, this bill creates a fiscal burden on school districts with its new 401k plan. The additional 1% that districts will need to add to their budgets for the 401k to go from 3% to 4% 
could cause some districts to fall below the mandatory 5% fund equity and go into state management. State management, or what we call emergency managers, is not a scenario any of our districts want to experience. Now in full disclosure, as an adjunct at Wayne County Community College District, we are part of the MIPSER system. And because of my higher date, this bill has no further effect on me personally than it does on any other taxpayer. But I am not going to stand here and say to the other teachers and professionals in our public education system who start after me, I'm going to get mine, forget the rest of you, which is exactly what this bill does. And it does it to some of the very kids I taught, my kids, because I still consider them my kids, all of us teachers do, who may be on track to graduating in a couple of years with their teaching degrees. I cannot and will not do this to them or to any other future fellow teacher. Now, maybe you don't have kids in public schools. Maybe your neighbor might, your best friend might, one of your relatives might. I don't know how on earth we can say that we devalue their children's education, that we devalue the very people who care for our kids every day to be willing to offer our Michigan public education employees a shoddy, updated require, re retirement package that fiscally does nothing to solve our fiduciary issues and assumes even greater risk. As a teacher, I give this bill a failing grade and urge a no vote. Thank you.